Right. Good morning everyone, welcome back to my allotment diaries. I'm sitting at my new desk in my shed. Thank you for all the shed love, by the way. Oh, there's the hat, a bit of hat hair going on there. Never mind, it's all right, we'll live. Um, thank you for all the shed love and uh, thank you for all the sympathy with the spider situation. <laughs> I'm actually still a little bit scared to be in here. Um, but it's okay because when everything's in the spiders tend to like just be in the corners and stuff so I'm, I don't see them it was only when I was getting it all out and they were like right in my way um but I think wherever they are now they can just stay and just live in harmony and don't bother me and I won't, I won't bother them basically <laughs> um hello my name is Emma these are my allotment diaries if you're new around here I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel um I am always this chaotic so there you go I have nothing nothing to say about that it's always like this in here. Um, any regulars will know that. Somebody did tell me how to sort my drill out, so I'm going to try and do that because I really do need to use it today. They said, now I didn't know how to get this thing open at the top, so what they told me to do was to put it into reverse, which is now I think, and then hold it and turn it. It's not working. I cannot for the life of me figure out how to open the flipping... It doesn't work. So there we go, I tried it. It doesn't work. So I can't use the drill because I don't know how to open the flipping drill. I have to wait for my husband to get here I think and he will just have to sort everything out for me. Because I am that useless. Um, right, okay, so... Obviously I just rocked up here I rocked up here today with nothing at all um, because I just completely forgot. I just dropped the kids at school and just wanted to get down here. So I have I can't do anything else to my shed right now, which I'm actually quite I think it might have been a, a purposeful thing because I don't like spiders and I'm giving myself a break from the shed. <laughs> I need to sort out my sprouts, so we're gonna go out and have a look at the sprouts and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do to them today. <laughs> very much assumed the entire way through growing these literally from seed to plant that they were going to die and nothing was ever going to come from them but it does turn out that I have actually managed to grow some sprouts which is excellent. They're not the tallest plants in the world but they certainly have got little sprouts growing on them so what I'm going to do today is remove a lot of the lower leaves um, which are already starting to die you can see um, and what this is going to do is allow the sprouts underneath to just develop better apparently this is what you do at this stage um i didn't know this but i was walking through my plot and i did see a lot of other people growing sprouts and they've done this and um actually i've got a great example over here come with me across the plot who's growing a lot better sprouts than me um my neighbour has removed all the lower leaves from their sprout plants and you can see all the lower leaves are removed and the sprouts really really have developed amazingly and they've just got a little spray of like leaves at the top um, and this is what everyone's sprouts look like at the plot and I didn't know that we were supposed to do that so I'm going to do that now. Just immediately noticed that my sprout plants do not look anywhere near as, as big as my neighbours and I think that is because they kept getting eaten and also they kept dying and I had to keep like re-sowing them so I think I sowed them quite late. To be honest just to get one sprout would be like amazing. Right Now that my sprouts have had their hair cut, they look like this. A little bit similar to my neighbours, it skews all the weeds everywhere, this bed is terrible. Um, yeah, uh, they look a little bit more like my neighbours now, but the, the sprouts are still very, very small. I can see some of the sprouts have been nibbled as well and eaten, which is really annoying and frustrating because I've been waiting so long for these. I hope they do get a bit bigger. Maybe this is as big as they're going to get. I certainly don't think I'll be getting sprouts for Christmas from here um, but hopefully in the new year maybe at some point I'm gonna leave them for as long as I physically can until I think that they've just had enough um, because I really want sprouts and I've worked so hard to grow these I'm gonna weed the bed underneath it I think and um, 
yeah I'll do that just just because I think it will just help the sprouts give them more nutrients weeds always compete for nutrients with plants so it's best to get rid of them obviously <laughs> While I'm weeding this, I thought it'd be a good time to have a little chat about what it means for your, clock, your plot to be cultivated versus not cultivated enough. When you take an allotment plot on, you do have to sign an agreement. And the agreement, basically, it will be different for every plot. On my plot in particular, it said that 75% of your plot has to be cultivated um, most of the time. And there is a little bit of leniency if you've just taken the plot on. Um, for example, on my plot, because it was a complete blackberry jungle, it was 25% in the first year going up to 75% in the second year. I was obsessed and determined and I managed to get pretty much my entire plot cultivated in the first year. Um, and if you watch my videos back, I think you'll know how much work and effort went into that. Uh, not everyone has that time, unfortunately. So there is leniency on that. However, I do get a lot of questions from people who have had letters of cultivation which basically means that your committee has decided that your plot is not looked after enough and you have to cultivate it more if you want to keep it you get like maybe two warnings and then you get a letter like basically being kicked off um, and the idea is just that they want everyone's plot to be kept nice not only is it unfair on people who have got a massive waiting list and are desperate for an allotment plot um, for people to just take the mick and not look after theirs. Um, it also has an impact on everyone else because the weeds spread, they set seed, they fly around the allotment plot and they make it harder for the ones of us who are actually looking after our plot. I do get a lot of uh, questions and I was like, I'm on a lot of allot allotment forums and stuff like on um, Facebook um, because I like getting lots of advice, I get advice from everywhere I can. Um, and a lot of people do hate their committee and they complain I don't know if you can hear me a lot of people complain about this cultivating rule and want to know exactly what it means and everything so for me cultivating means that your plot is actually in a, in a condition that means that you can plant stuff into it it means that the weeds are kept at bay it doesn't have to be perfect allotment plots are a little bit shabby by nature but it needs to be mainly looked after and i will show you a couple of examples Before you worry, I'm not going to go showing any neighbours' plots, I'm going to show you the examples on my very own plot. Um, I'm not about to go snooping around or anything. Right, this side of my plot, I would say, is cultivated to a very, very good standard. I've got very clearly defined raised beds, a few weeds in this one, but most of them are in fairly good shape, they've got things growing in. This one here is a very good example of something that's been completely mulched, ready for the spring. I have really good paths. There's not a lot of weeds coming up over my paths, making it unmanageable. The weeds are mainly contained within the beds, if there are any. Um, I've got my little wildlife pond here, which is clearly outlined. This is a good example of a plot that is fairly well cultivated. This little part of my plot here, which sits under this tree, which um, I thought was a poplar tree and everyone's saying is a wild cherry. Um, this is not cultivated. This is an unkempt, uncultivated part of my plot which needs attention. This accounts for about, I would say, about 25% of my plot. This section over here is now classified as cultivated because I have got cardboard down repressing the weeds and I'm going to put polytunnel there and it's very clear that something is happening, it's being taken care of, its attention is being given to this side of my plot. So the question is, what makes this part of my plot uncultivated and that part of my plot cultivated in the eyes of a committee? Well, this part of my plot, let's have a look what we've got growing here. There is an awful lot of tufts of grass, which is incredibly difficult to pull out of the ground. It's going to compete with anything you grow. It's weeds. There's weeds look going all over the floor. I've got these, which are just the worst, because these are like ornamental grasses, and the roots go really deep. Um, and you can just see around here as well, look at all the tufts of grass that I have to dig out. Very, very tough. Can't grow anything here. And if you did try and grow something in here it would die because it's got absolutely no chance with all these weeds around it. 
if my entire plot was like this little section of my plot here, I'd have it taken away from me. It's uncultivated, but not only that, it's not fair. You can't do anything with a plot that looks like this. And if I was to stick some like blueberry plants and raspberries in it and say it's cultivated because I've got some fruit plants growing, it's not, it's just a lie. It's ridiculous. This part of my plot does not look like this part of my plot. This is cultivated, this is taken care of and looked after. This is not. Anyway, the reason I wanted to share that is because this is the time of year when people go around and do inspections on allotment plots and I do get an awful lot of questions as to what they're going to look for, what makes it cultivated versus uncultivated, what they should be doing. Just look after your plot basically and make it look like this. You don't have to have stuff growing the whole year round, but it does have to be well maintained. You need to look after your paths, you need to keep weeds at bay where you can and mulch over the beds ready for spring, that's it. It's that simple. Um, so don't get stressed about it. I didn't have anything growing last year in winter because I, I didn't know how to do it. So my beds were all empty, except for the strawberries, which just don't ever go anywhere. Um, but yeah, yeah, and I just kept I just kept weeding it. So that's all you have to do. And now talking about weeds, this is, uh, this is the Brussels sprout bed now. Look at that, so much better so much better i don't think i'm going to cover these now everyone's saying to leave them uncovered now so i think i'm going to risk it and leave them uncovered but look i've got rid of all the weeds looks great right i thought i'd just do a little tour really now and just show you some of the things that are growing so over here is my garlic and onion bed and i'm pleased to say everything's growing i'm i'm pleased to say all the leaves blew off in the storm um and i i mulched the bed basically with fallen leaves thinking it would be an excellent clever free way of mulching my bed and they all just blew away so um i think next time i'll have to put some netting down but anyway they're still growing some of them went a little bit bent in the in the storm and I hope that, that they'll still be all right. I can't remember which are garlic and which are onions. I believe the garlic is over there and the onions are at the front here, but I can't be sure. Um, but no, yeah, they're all coming up. That's excellent. And the bed has been really quite heavily mulched. So the weeds aren't causing too much of a problem right now. But yeah, really pleased that they're all coming up. Fingers crossed we actually get garlic and onion next year. I'm actually quite ashamed to say it's my fourth attempt at growing on onions and garlic and I've never managed to do it. Um, there's something about my soil is just too boggy or something, I don't know. But anyway, I really heavily mulched this and it's got cardboard down and everything. And I'm really hoping that I get just some this year, so fingers crossed. Come on guys, you can do it. I believe in you. So I've attempted to cover my board beans because I was really worried about the frost and the cold and stuff. I wanted, I really wanted them to be good, and um, they, as they've started to grow, because I've made the cover too tight. Well, have a look what's happened. They've all started to fall over and snap. They do not look very happy at all. This one's completely snapped off. He's dead. Oh, what a shame! What a shame! What a silly thing! Right, I'm going to leave these uncovered now. I think and just hope that they survive. I think covering them was a big, big mistake because they've just not, look, they've not been able to grow up and when they've grown up, they've snapped and, and bent over. Oh, this is just my massive attempt because I'm desperate to get them. I've covered everything at the plot in because out of panic, out of panic, the pigeons, foxes, cats, slugs, snails, moths, everything, but I'm going to leave it all uncovered now. Oh, please come back, broad beans, please. Oh, dear. I think they might be okay if I just leave them alone. <laughs> Sometimes, just if you just don't interfere, don't interfere, and then they just do better. Um, under here, I've got my cabbages and stuff. You go under first and have a look. Let me know what it's like, guys. Oh, it's not too bad under here. It's not too bad. I'm just going to leave these alone. <laughs> so that's cabbages and cauliflower. Again, I've never managed to grow a cauliflower. Um, I have managed to grow one cabbage. So that's a start, isn't it? But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And then this all down here is just, there's nothing growing in there. Oh, 
of the uh, guys, for some reason, I am just not good at growing autumn winter stuff. I don't know why. Ugh. Obviously, there's not too much to do at the plot this time of year other than just keep your eye on it, keep it neat, keep mulching, keep weeding, um, and just try and keep your autumn winter stuff alive. I'm obviously not doing a great job of that, but I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's not me, it's the plants. Blame the plants. Right, um, I'm going to go home and have a lovely cup of tea now because I'm absolutely freezing. Um, next time I come, I'm going to bring some more stuff to finish my shed off and everything. Um, I just want to say thank you again for all your comments that you leave me. I absolutely love them. I read them all. I do my best to reply to them. Um, follow me over on Instagram. Follow my blog. And I will see you in my next video. I hope you enjoyed today. And good luck with your Brussels sprouts. Let me know how your Brussels sprouts are getting on, guys. I will see you next time, next week. See you then. Bye.